climate crisis is definitely upon us, but unfortunately, the elites seem to think that we're all just a bunch of suckers and, you know, doing the things that we really need to do in order to avoid a climate catastrophe. Yeah, that's not going to happen. And they kind of make it clear. But let's see what type of a wonderful clip. I know that Hillary Clinton was a speaker, so I'm not going to be able to well, take that too just, seriously. Yeah, well, that just is, kind of gives away the game. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if Hillary Clinton is a speaker, then they're not serious. No. So here we go. Let's see what the wonderful, benevolent leaders of the free world had to say at COP28. We're seeing uh, and beginning to pay attention and to count and record uh, the deaths that are related to climate. And by far, the biggest killer is extreme heat. Extortionate borrowing costs are blocking their climate action plans. And support is far too little, far too late. Developed countries must show how they will double adaptation finance to 40 billion US dollars a year by 2025, as promised, and clarify how they are delivering on the 100 billion US dollars as promised. And some ask, some ask us, why do we care about the Palestinians? Why do climate justice groups mobilize in their millions from Pakistan to the Philippines, from Belgium to Brazil, from South Africa to Sweden? Why is it that people from all around the world, black, white, brown, Jew, Muslim, Christian, are taken to the streets? It's because we have seen the masks that have slipped. We have seen how the Palestinians are not even viewed as human beings. So we are packaging Africa differently as a continent of opportunity, potential opportunity, and now investment. And that is why I am telling you that I am finally persuaded that Africa has a different narrative. And we say to those powerful countries, who put words of human rights into text over there, that no amount of empty words will ever erase your complicity. You not only wrote the blank check, you enabled this, you own this, you own this as much as those who are put, dropping the bombs on the terrified people of Palestine. If we want to stay to our target of 1.5 degrees, in fact, we already have enough oil, gas and coal on the surface of the planet or under construction to take us past two degrees. Climate change is a matter of life and death for us as indigenous peoples in all regions. Greenhouse gas emissions continue to, to rise. Indigenous peoples here are demanding the parties to this conference recommit, recommit to the 1.5 degree target. It is like a thou, not a it. We don't manipulate, we don't dominate, we don't subjugate, you know, squeeze every ounce just for profit, even when we relate to each other and when we relate to the earth. So we don't come in a spirit of self-righteousness, we come in a spirit of not just acknowledging climate emergency, it's worse than that. It is climate catastrophe. And it's, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a key ingredient to all the transition pathway work that we're doing is to start with a, with a baseline that's agreed, then agree a pathway, you know, then agree what the, what the uh, appropriate uh, and necessary investments are to, to stay alive on that pathway, and then to use carbon markets to, to offset these, these uh, difficult to evade or unavailable emissions. Uh, but it all starts with data. And uh, you know, while the data is reasonably clear coming out of some of the, the most developed economies, it's very unclear coming out of the developing economies. And uh, that obviously, apart from making the job more difficult, undermines confidence that they, some of the solutions we're coming up with are, are in, completely legit. From our indigenous people all across the country and the world, yes, we will not allow the organized greed to have the last word. Well, it's just I do to love me some mystery. Dr. West. Yeah. I do love me some Dr. Good West. Good note to end on, of course. Yeah. But as you can see, if you're going to lead with Hillary Clinton being a speaker in an event, like, first of all, it's not why in the hell is she there? Why is she anywhere? We say that no matter where it is. So, you know, I'm just saying. Like, to understand the depravity of, of certain people, but they all want to get together and feel good about what they're doing. And this is where a lot of the people on the right come together and say, you see these people? I guarantee you Hillary Clinton showed up to this event in a private plane. Like that's not well, even up she to can't, she can't fly commercial. 
she can't even be out in public. I don't understand because people, she's just too loathed. I mean, there are people that stay at home. Well, I agree. But that's the same reason like Debbie, when she goes to events, she only goes to events where nobody can come up and talk to her. She leaves as soon as she's done talking. She doesn't like the people get ushered in and out. They have a driver because they know that the people they can't talk to people. Well, I've been of considerable advocacy for a while now, for those who've been watching our channel, that if you are actually serious about getting off of coal, natural gas and ultimately crude oil, that's only going to happen if you advance on nuclear power. But that also you, takes a really long time to develop. It, it has depends. its whole own no, series there of problems. Are, listen, there are always going to be issues. But here's what I do know about nuclear. It basically has a net zero carbon footprint. And if you want to utilize whatever is available. But, okay. All if right. you want to utilize whatever is available, I, Colin is uh, showing us something. Yeah. Here is a great little nugget. Oh, the my world's God. elite have arrived at COP27. This is from a year ago, but it's still relevant. It's the same amount of people. On hundreds of private jets to lecture you about climate change. Sponsored, sponsored by, by Coca-Cola. Coca you can't make this shit up. This is they all think you're, They all think you're dumb. But, but here's the thing, though. That, to me, is very, very indicative and symbolic of how most people want to approach the climate crisis. Correct. And we've had, we've discussed it on the show. I am sort of off of that at this point because I I would suggest people go back and watch when we, we talked with um, Derek Jensen and Lear Keith from the authors of Bright Green Lies. But all of these solutions are just capitalist green solutions that have their own footprint. So I understand what you're saying about nuclear is that it has no carbon emissions, but okay, there's other effects besides carbon emissions that are the source of a lot of our problems. Okay. Deforestation is a huge source of our problems. Monoculture agricrop culture is one of our biggest problems. We have some serious issues and it isn't just about well, I can carbon tell you emissions. That one of the big problems, and again, this is just the, the, the sheer hypocrisy. That if you want to talk about one of the biggest destructors of the environment. How private, much of that? But we don't private, know how much of that are those people. That's well, it's it's saying it's private, but private air travel is absolutely devastating to the environment. No, that is that is a satellite of every plane in the area captured at that moment, okay? The fact that they're putting that up there to make their point, those are not all private jets going to this event. It's just not so. So really? I understand they're using that as the graphic image, and I'm sure there are tons of people there, but that's a ridiculous amount. That is not that is not how that works. Look, it's not that many people that fly in private jets. That's however, what I'm saying. That picture however, was overall flight. However, it is still a significant problem. There is no question it's been measured in many different metrics regarding how much, you know, the top 1% of the world emits any type of climate uh you know, in infraction and in whatever you want to call it, comparatively speaking to the rest of the world. And it is pretty substantial. Yeah, private jets is definitely. I have no desire. I, again, it's it's for some people, it's their bag. Uh, it would never be for me. Have it's, you been on private jet? Sure, I have. It's really but it's nice. no, but who gives a shit? I don't know. The best part of it, I will tell you what it what it is for me. Is was the ease and convenience of not having to deal with a terminal, the security, with all that. It has nothing to do with the actual. Sure, and I'm sure everybody. Like, oh, I'm on a private jet. It's just, oh, God sure. damn, and it was I'm sure convenient. That everybody that flies on a private jet probably feels the same way. But at some point, you have to recognize that you have to share <clears throat> this fucking planet with other people. It's true. And either you're going to accept that reality, or you think that you could just be a selfish prick times a thousand and do whatever the hell you want and act like a shithead and just keep doing it forever. Well, let me tell you something. When shit really starts to hit the fan, you can't eat money and you can't drink oil. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.